So, you know, we talk a lot about things that patients can do to, you know, help themselves with immunotherapy. You know, there's a lot of very important basic aspects, you know, we talk about the, you know, the effect of acetaminophen, that that seems to inhibit uh, immunotherapy. Uh, patients who are doing combination chemotherapy and immunotherapy, how they really need to avoid the steroid component. You know, a lot of times they pre-treat patients with steroids, or they also pre-treat with Tylenol. And then, you know, antibiotic use certainly when necessary, but not used frivolously. Um, but, you know, more and more we're seeing these combinations of immunotherapy. And so when you look at like FDA approval, so you know you've got drugs that are CTLA-4 inhibitors such as Uroid. You've got PD-1 inhibitors such as Opdivo and Keytruda. And then you've got the new combination of Dulag, which has Opdivo and Relatinib which is a LAG3 inhibitor. And that was the first new type of agent approved since 2014. Then you wanna look at like, what are some other drugs that you could use, maybe some off-label drugs that can boost things. You know, we look a lot at TGF-beta, which TGF-beta you can measure in the blood. And TGF-beta suppresses the immune response. It's produced by the cancer, it's produced by the, the fibroblasts and other things around the cancer. And so there are some off-label drugs that enhance it or inhibit it, and there's also some off-label or some supplements that can also reduce TGF-beta. Um, a drug used for pulmonary fibrosis called pyrifinidon uh, is helpful in decreasing TGF-beta. Uh, berberin, uh, curcumin to some degree, uh, black cumin seed oil, all of those may also affect TGF-beta in a positive way. And then, you know, we're, we're, but more and more, you know, we know for, to get an immune response, you need more extensive combinations of immunotherapy. Clearly, that's why I always say, you know, you've got to inject in the tumor. I mean, I'm not going to be able to give a patient 10 immunotherapy drugs systemically. That's just not going to be possible. You've got to go into the tumor. And that's, of course, the direction that, that we're going. And also, it's not so simple just to say you're going to give the patient all these immunotherapy drugs. There's a lot of times there's a sequence to it. So you start with one set, increase immune infiltration into the cancer, then you change to another set that boosts the activation of the immune cells, and then you've got another set that's blocking the checkpoints. And so, you know, there's all these different combinations, a lot of moving parts in immunotherapy. Um, you know, we're focusing a lot now on tumor associated macrophages, myeloid-derived suppressor cells, B cells. You know, before everybody just talked about T cells, and that's where most of the immunotherapy nowadays really works but that's very one dimensional. You have to get beyond that. You know, again, as I say a lot of times, using only T cells is like, you know, fighting a war and only using one branch of your military. You're not gonna win most wars that way. And so it, with immunotherapy, it's the same thing. You've gotta use lots of combinations. Certainly the standard drugs, the PD-1 inhibitors, the CTLA-4, LAG-3, those can be used to be, you know, fairly effective. Unfortunately, still for most patients, you're just talking about buying time. Occasionally, there are some great responses, um, but to get what we really want, you know, true, complete responses, hopefully leading to cures, you know, it's going to take lots of immunotherapy agents, way beyond, you know, just the standard ones, and use with off-label drugs and supplements and affecting the microbiome in a positive way. And so, this is all the things that are going to lead ultimately to a cure. Uh, Certainly in our group, we're right on top of this. And um, you know, I think more and more people are learning and certainly we'll see this. In the future, it'll be mainstream, but you know, still probably 10 to 15 years off. But a uh, very exciting time for cancer. Um, I think you know, we're gonna see more and more uh, improvements and our knowledge is growing yearly. I mean, gosh, we're getting, gaining more knowledge than we've had in a whole lifetime. So, thank you for watching this video.